All right, let's see here. Who can see me? See if we got some people hopping on. There we go. I'm gonna see who's coming. All right, let's see here. Oh, here we go. Hey, Stacy. Hello, everybody. Good evening, Brooke. Good evening, Brooke. Everyone, good to see you. Let me see if I can get this set up. Oh, that's going to be dangerous. But I got it. I got it. Set it up. All right, all right. Look at that. Look at that. Got it set up on my laptop here. Good to see you. I can't hear you, sir. Can you guys hear me okay? I got my ear, ear, my ear pods in. I am coming at you live outside. Good evening, Amy. I am coming here. Let me see if I can set. I'm gonna try to move. this look at this reposition good you can hear me we are live outside of six flags over texas tonight we are here i got me and my family they're inside the park scaring it up at fright fest they're doing the old six flags trip we were doing six flags and stepping away from that to come and hang out with you guys tonight. So I got my, my awesome Sid Licious is here with me. And uh, <laughs> and Abby and Christine are inside Six Flags. They go till 10 o'clock, I think. And so thanks for shifting around with us today. I wanted to, I wanted to make sure we came on live today and kind of get in the word a bit. Um, and then I want to pray for you guys. And so just want you to know that we're praying for you. Know that you're not alone that uh, you guys are at the top of our mind, uh, Christine and myself, we, we care about you guys. We believe radically in the restoration of your marriage. I'm gonna take one ear out and see, Tell me, someone tell me so I can hear my surrounding a little better. Does it still sound okay? Can you give me just a little feedback there? So just with one earpiece in, does it sound okay? I'm gonna hear that. If not, I'll put my other earpiece in, but these AirPod Pros have like that noise canceling and I hear nothing but myself. I don't hear any anything else. And so, sounds good, perfect. Thank you, Julie. That's what I needed to know. Fantastic. All right. So, what I want to do tonight, here, guys, is I want to get into. I want to give you gives you a little bit of a Bible study tonight that I think is really, really going to be beneficial and helpful. Um, and so, and then I want to pray. I'm going to pray for you guys. Like I was just saying, uh, we care for you guys. We love you guys. We don't take your um, your time uh, shortly. Um, and so. Or lightly, I should say, uh, we believe in your marriage. We believe in your stand for restoration. Um, we are believing God to heal everything that's broken, every broken part. This is what God does. This is how he rolls. And so I remember there are times that we were just, you know, just believing, okay, God, what are you doing? What are you doing? Are you going to be here? Are you going to do this? Are you going to move? And he's and absolutely the question is yes. God is in control of your family and he's in control of your marriage. And so um, I'm just so happy for you guys to be on here with me tonight. And just we're going to be praying for you guys. But I want to get in the word a little bit. I want to give you a little bit of a Bible study of something that I believe are some of the pillars of let me reword that some of the main components of having a presence um, culture around your family of, of just having the presence of God because if you can get the presence of God involved in your life and involved in your family everything shifts and there's a couple um, declarations there's a couple um, there's several of them I'm going to give you guys. I've got 10 of them I'm going to, I'm going to share with you guys. So I want you to, to write these down. Um, and so these are 10 declarations that is just establishing that your family, that your situation, that your stand is completely surrounded by the presence of the Lord. 
because that is what changes things. And so we're going to declare over these over you guys, and we're going to begin to pray and prophesy over you guys tonight and just declare God's goodness. But I want to just jump in into them right now, and I'm going to give you some verses. So I'm going to pull them up as I, as, I, as I tell you. But number one, what I want you guys, one declaration. You guys can type these in the comments so people will hop on. Uh, they can see where we're going. But here's one declaration that we must have in the middle of the stand. When you're standing for your marriage, when restoration looks so far away, when it doesn't look like anything's happening positive, when your spouse is going the other direction and who knows, there might be someone else involved and they're saying, I'm moving on, I'm starting another family, whatever lie, whatever they're saying about you and about your family, in order to, to stay focused on the presence of God, it's crucial. So here's number one. Number one, I want you to write this. God is good all the time, okay? God is good all all the time. We, I know that's simple. And I know that's a phrase that we say. I know a lot of churches say God is good and everyone goes all the time. And then someone goes all the time and then someone says God is good. I grew up with that and, and uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm kind of turned off by that a little bit. You know, uh, it, it's become so kind of remedial, just kind of like, oh, okay, we say it. Do we leave it? Do we live it? So, but it's true. And so I want you guys to know God is good all the time. And here's a verse I want you guys to write down. Psalms 27, 13. Psalms 27, 13, it says this, I believe, and I love what he said here, I believe that I shall look upon the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Psalms 27, verse 13, I believe I will look upon the goodness of God. And so that is a declaration. That is something we must surround ourselves in right now as you're standing for your marriage, as you're believing God to restore and to heal and to fix. The first one is to get the understanding and you protect it, you declare it, you don't let the devil tell you anything differently, that you say God is good all the time. At all times, God's goodness is on display. God is good no matter what's happening. His goodness doesn't shift because maybe our spouses aren't being good, right? Even when you're not being good, when you're acting like an idiot and you're doing things that you shouldn't be doing and you're responding to them in ways that you this is not going to bring you closer to restoration, even in those moments, those moments of doubting, those moments of fear, those moments of cussing, those moments of yelling, those moments of, of just whatever it is that's going on in your life, we could be living in a way that's not good. But guess what? God is. And so having that as a core fixture. Of, of making sure that that doesn't come at you because everything that I'm saying to you, these are ways the enemy is going to attack you guys. And I'm sure that I would give you this list of 10 things. You're going to say, oh, I know the enemy has attacked me for every one of these. Um, this is what he comes at. This is what he really wants to come at us. But if we can just come around these, I like to call these, these fence poles, you know, like we built a fence. Um, I've not built a fence. Well, have I built a fence? No, but my wife is asking me to build a fence in my backyard because we got our new rescue dog and he needs a bigger place to play. And I have gotten, I'm getting suckered into building this fence. And me and my friend's gonna build it. You know David, who's been on the lives with me. We even rent a big postal digger. And we got the postal digger and we, we put the hole in the ground and we put the post in the ground and it started to rain and we couldn't build a fence. So I took the postal digger back as a big electric thing or a big gas powered thing. And so I wasn't able to build a fence. But what we were doing is we were putting the poles. I already went down, me and Christine and Abby and Sydney, we walked around the perimeter of our house, of our backyard, and I had this orange spray paint and I sprayed it on the ground at where we were gonna put the poles. And we had to measure them off to kind of get the distance and understand how many we we're gonna do. You're like, Jason, why are you telling me this? These 10 things, I believe these are the whole, these are the, the, the frames, the posts of building that, that fence, that protection around your stand. So these things, these are the posts that we wanna dig deep into the ground and we build off and they connect, but these are the posts, these are the frames that, that they go deep that we pour concrete in. And we say, this is becoming immovable and nothing's gonna shift this. And once I get these, these controlled and these in our life, it's gonna build this perimeter around our mind and around our heart around our spouses that the enemy cannot cannot come against. So does that make sense? So that's what we're doing here. We're building these 10 little, these poles that's gonna be around the perimeter of your heart. And so number one, God is good all the time. We must absolutely declare them. Like I said, I believe, this is Psalms 27, 13. I want you to say that, I want you to type it. I believe that I shall look upon the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Let me read you what the Passion Translation, how it words that verse. It says, yet, I totally trust you to rescue me one more time so that I can see once again how good you are while I'm still alive. Isn't that awesome? Don't you love that translation? I'm going to read that again. This is the Passion Translation. Psalms 27, 13. This is the goodness of God putting that tent to peg in. This is verse 13 of the Passion Translation. Yet I totally trust you to rescue me one more time. 
How about that declaration? Say, God, I'm totally trusting you to rescue me. And I love what it says, one more time. Because how many times has God been intervening on your behalf and rescuing you? I mean, countless, right? But then he says, so that I can see once again how good you are while I'm still alive. And so that is what I want you guys to declare. So just begin to declare, God is good. God is good. I know it's simple, I know it's basic, but that is something the enemy wants to absolutely destroy and just tear apart. And so that's tent pole number one that we're putting around our life and putting around your stand. The next tent pole that I want you guys to look at, and this is the verse I'm gonna pull up here real fast for me real quick. And that is, here we go. It's this reality, number two, tent pole, the fence, the framing of the good of of how we can get the presence of God. Look, this is a presence culture is what we're trying to do. So let me give you a little some wordage, some 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 bones to put this in. The umbrella for tonight is letting the presence of God dwell on your home and dwell on your stand. In order to allow that to happen, we are building a fence around our perimeter of our mind and our heart and our family that keeps all the distractions out and that keeps the glory, um, a, a landing spot, if you will, uh, for that presence to fall. And so that's where it is. So all of this is under getting the presence of God to fall on your family and fall on your life. You guys hear that? I don't know if you hear that or not. You hear that's the uh, that's the old bobsled ride just coming through. It just sounds like the wave, the move of the Holy Spirit. <sighs> That's what, it, that's what we're going to believe it is. It's not a roller coaster. It's the move of the Spirit coming into you. Isn't that right, Sydney? Okay. okay. She says, okay, I'll take it. I agree with her. All right. So number two. Here's what I want. This is number two. Write this down. I co-labor with a good God, and I represent him through miracles, signs, and wonders. Okay? That is a declaration. That's a tent pole. I want you to put in, and I want you to pour concrete in. I'm going to read it again for you. I co-labor with a good God. Someone type this in so you have a nice record of this. I co-labor with a good God and represent him through miracles, signs, and wonders. Guys, I want you to believe this. If you want the presence of God to surround your life and your family and your stand, we need to come into agreement with this truth that as I'm standing, that over my life, over my spouse's life, I co-labor. Guys, this is why you're standing. This is why you're doing what you're doing. This is why you're in the group. This is why you're, pray you're praying, you're believing, because you're believing that there is a way that you can co-labor with God. You can. You are standing for restoration. You are co-laboring with God. And I love what, how it's worded. I co-labor with a good God. There it is, Pam. I like what you I co-labor with a good God and I represent him through miracles, signs, and wonders. How many of you guys understand that when your family begins to see the restoration of your marriage, they will say, whoa, that was a miracle. That was a sign that makes me freaking wonder how did that happen, right? How many of you guys have people in your life who are so not believing the restoration will happen that once it does, it will be a miracle? And they have said that. How many guys put in your comment section of how many people have told you it would only happen if a miracle takes place, right? I'm sure we all have those people. Or this will be a sign for other people to see. Or the wonder. They're going to be wondering how in the heck did that happen? How did this family get restored? Who is this God that they're following? How is that going on? How ever did it happen? And your answer to that question is how did it happen? Here's your answer. Tent pole, fence pole, I should probably say fence pole number two is because I co-labored with a good God. That's why. I co-labored with him and I represent him. And I represent him how? Through miracles, signs, and wonders. Here's the verse I want you to write down with this scripture reference. First Corinthians chapter three, verse nine. 1 Corinthians 3, 9 says, it simply says this, For we are God's fellows, fellow workers. You are God's field, God's building. Are you like that? I'm going to read it again. For we are God's fellow workers. You are God's field, comma, God's building. That is who you are. I'm going to read the Passion Train. I just love how the Passion really words it. It just breaks it down in such reality, in such 2020 kind of terms. It says, we are co-workers with God, and you are God's cultivated garden, the house he is building. That's who you're doing, guys. You are the co-workers with God. Because of your stand, because of your prayers, because of your faithfulness, because of you simply just not backing down, you simply just loving unconditionally, you loving radically, because of your doing that, that is representing the God who is good 
the God who will move and release signs and wonders. So that's number two. Number one, God is good all the time. Don't forget that. Number two, I co-labor with a good God and I represent him through miracles, signs and wonders. So number three, here's the number three uh, fence pole that I want you to put up in your life, in your, in your, in your stand and in your heart. And that is found in Mark 16. Let me just pull it up for you. It's pulling up that translation. Let me change back to my regular translation. Number three is this. Someone write this down for me. Number three, God has called me to make a difference and shape the course of my family. Okay. I want you to write that. Number three, I want you to put this pole and begin to build this. God has called me to make a difference and to shape the course of my family history. He has called me to shape the course of my family history and to make a difference. So let me just read it. So if, if you like typing it down, there we go. I think we got it. God called me to make a difference and shape the course of history, shape the course of family history. Mark chapter 16, verse 17 and 18. Mark chapter 16. It says, and they clothed him in a purple cloak and twisting together a crown of thorns they put on him. They began to salute him saying that they, you know, the king of the Jews. God, right there at that moment, changed everything for you and changed everything for me. He shifted it all. He is the one that came in and shifted everything that there was to shift. That God called you to make a difference. He's called you to shift. He's called you to transform. He And put that, I want you to put that post. Begin to pour the concrete. Make this immovable for you to surround and to build that, that backyard, that front yard, to bring the glory of the Lord in your home. He has called you to make a difference and to shape the course of history. Jesus shaped the course of history. This is what Jesus did when he died on the cross. And I don't know if, I'm sure we thought about it, but I don't know if we thought about that reality. Jesus didn't just do one thing. He, he, he changed everything so much that the calendar changed, right? It's it's B.C. and then A.D. B.C., we can, we can call it before common era. But we got, everyone knows it means before Christ. And just people who weren't comfortable with saying Christ, they called it before common era, you know, or A.D., you know, after death, right? He changed the course of history. And so when he died on the cross, everything shifted. Everything changed. You guys, this is what you're doing for your family. You are shifting. God has called you to make a difference and shape the course of history. All right, number four. Check this one out. Just like Jesus did, I represent my father in everything I do. Just like Jesus did, I represent the father in everything I do. This is one that we want to build in our life. We want this reality. We want this, 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 that pole as we begin to build upon that is just so true that even if, if it's something that you think is insignificant, Jesus simply said this. This is in, in John chapter five, verse 19. Jesus said, truly, truly, I say to you, the son can do nothing on his own accord, but only what he sees the father doing for what the father does, the son does likewise. And so Jesus made this declaration. And so as you and I are believing for the presence of God to enter into our family and enter into our spouses, we have to take the same approach as Jesus. We can't just be doing our own thing. Jesus was committed and he was dead set. He said, look, I don't do anything on my own accord. You would think if anyone could run off and do their own thing, it's Jesus, right? But Jesus said, look, I'm only doing what I hear my father doing. I only do what I see he does. And for whatever the father does, the son does likewise. Guys, when we begin to build this up in your life, you begin to experience the presence of God like never before. Your spouse will begin to experience the presence of God. When you start the simple reality of having, look, I'm going to just read it again. Just like Jesus, I represent my Father in everything I do. Make that declaration right now. Type that in the comment section. Just begin to declare it. Hey, I'm just like Jesus. I represent the Father in everything I do. If I'm doing it, I'm representing Him. If this isn't representing Him, I'm not going to do it. Because I need the presence of God on my family and on this situation. So, number five. Okay, let's see what we're we looking on time here. Number five. This is a good one. All right, I like this one. I want you to make this declaration. Nothing is impossible with God. All right, nothing is impossible with God. But I, I don't want you to stop there. I got another phrase for you. Nothing is impossible with God. I, as, as a believer, it is in my DNA to pursue impossibilities and see them bow to Jesus. Come on. How about that declaration? How about that pent, that I keep saying uh, tent post, but I mean, I want uh, like the, the post of the fence, the post of pouring concrete in your life. 
Nothing is impossible with God. As a believer, it is in my DNA to pursue impossibilities and see them bow to Jesus. I'm going to read that again. Someone type this word for word for me. Let them all see it. Nothing is impossible with God. As a believer, it is in my DNA to pursue impossibilities and see them bow to Jesus. Guys, that's what you're doing in your stand right now. Here's people in your life saying that your family, it is impossible. You are running. You're pursuing the impossibilities. And you are making it known. Look, I will see that impossibility absolutely bow. Luke 137. You guys probably know this verse. I've shared it many other times in many other talks. Luke 137 says, for nothing will be impossible with God. Nothing is impossible with God. And you are, you're like saying, hey, it's in my DNA to pursue that and to see the impossibility bow before Jesus. What if you just took on that mindset? You built that reality of your mind and your heart. I'm telling you, when you do, the presence of God will begin to fall on you. The presence of Jesus will begin to discern, will begin to just, just absolutely just engulf you and just surround you and everything you do. Let me give you another verse on that topic. Uh, John chapter 14 here. Let me pull that one up. What's going on with my computer? Don't be stubborn on me. John chapter 14. Verses 12 through 14. Check this out, guys. Ready for this? This is why it's in your DNA to make the impossibilities bow. This is Jesus' words. Truly I say to you, whoever believes in me also will do the works that I do. That's pretty good, but it ain't done. And greater works than these will he do, because I'm going to the Father. Whatever you ask in my name, this I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask me anything in my name, I will do it. Guys, we are meant, we are here to let the world know that the impossibilities bow to the name of Jesus. That's in your DNA. That's who God created you to be. He said, truly, truly, this is who you are. You're going to do greater things than I did, is what Jesus said. That's freaking crazy. But those are his words. And so this is what we're believing. We live with that reality. And next thing you know, that you begin to see the presence of God fall on your life and fall on your family like you haven't seen in a whole long time. So that's number five. Number six, let's get through these. I want, I want to make sure we have time to pray. Number six, okay? This is strong theological truth that I want to make sure we got to know here. Number six is every single thing that I need was purchased for me at Calvary. Every single thing that I need was purchased for me at Calvary. There's nothing that is that, 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 that you are lacking. There's nothing that you need that already wasn't purchased because of Jesus, what he did at Calvary, what he did on the cross, it was all done for you. It was all of it. Jesus said in John 19, verse 30, look at this. G John 19, verse 30. Jesus had received the sour wine and he said, it is finished. He bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Jesus said on Calvary, it's done. It's done. It's finished. I've done everything. I've given them everything. I have now made a way. I have now bought everything that was broken. I have now redeemed every sin that any man has ever done. I have now brought forth the ministry of reconciliation to everything that needs to be restored. If it needed to get done, I just did it. It's finished. And I want you just beginning to declare right now that this separation, it's finished. That the divorce, it's finished. That, this, that the, the strain in the relationship, it is finished. Why? Because Jesus bought everything you need. He purchased it all at Calvary. There's nothing else that needs to get done. Jesus already did it. It is finished. And when we put that, that pole in the ground and we begin to build around that truth, I'm telling you, the glory and the presence of God is going to fall on you like never before. Number seven. You okay doing 10 of these, guys? We're going to keep going. We're going to, I, got, I got four more, and then I want to pray for a couple of you guys. So we got four more. I want to give you these these uh, these ten things here. I just I just I put this on my heart, and I want to just to really re release these to you because the presence of God is meant to be with you. And here's how we begin to build it. Number seven, Jesus provided the answer to my problem before I ever had a problem. It is easy for me to trust Him in all situations. <laughs> Isn't that good? I'm going to say that again. 
Jesus provided the answer to my problem before I ever had a problem. And now make this declaration. It's easy for me to trust him in all situations. I want you to say it. It's easy for me to trust him. Why? Because he's already provided the answer to the problem before he even knew there's a problem. Jesus already provided the answer to your situation before the situation ever occurred. He's already given it to you. He's already done it. And so therefore, with that reality, we can begin to say, this is easy. It's easy for me to trust him in this situation. Begin to say it, begin to declare it, begin to have this faith. Because once we make that declaration and once we come around that reality, then you will begin to find that the presence of Jesus will begin to show up in your life like ways that you haven't previously experienced. This is what we're trying to do. Okay, and so everything is given you, right? Ephesians 1, 3. Look at this verse, Ephesians 1, 3. Blessed be God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ. Look at that. He has blessed. This is past tense. He has already blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. You have already been given everything that you need. He has already given it to you. He has already made it happen. This is why we can say, hey, before the problem even existed, he's got it. And then, of course, you guys know Romans 8, 28. And we know that those who love God, all things work together for those good who are called and according to his purpose. We're like, look, I know the ending here. I know all things that work together. Romans 8, 28. How can I know that? Because Jesus had the answer to the problem before there was ever even a problem. And so since we know that reality, that can give us peace. That can, we build that pole up. We begin to build that fence, that reality. And that begin to, we begin to encounter the presence of God in a powerful way. And we begin to say, you know what? It's easy for me to trust him. He's already given me the answer. He's already provided for me. And that leads to that. All right. Number eight. This is a great one. You're going to like this one. I hope you like this one. I like this one. Sydney, you like this one? She doesn't know what it is. And she says she likes it. She's, I don't know what you're talking about. But I like it, Dad. I, I said I like it. She's going to like it. You, you don't worry about it. She, she, she's going to say it. Here it is. Number eight. Three simple words. I am significant. I want you to build that pole, build that truth. You are significant. You are. I'm going to give you a second one, but I want us to start with this one. I am significant. Okay? Why? Ephesians chapter 2, verse 6 tells you that you have been raised up with him and you have been seated with him in heavenly places. You understand that? Right now, you are are seated in heavenly places. You have been raised up. Guys, someone who's insignificant doesn't get in that position. You don't sit in the heavenly places. You don't get raised up with Christ if you're not significant. He has made you completely, completely significant. And he says, so that, you know, then we just keep going about all, oh, verse 10, for we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works. You are significant. Let me just give you another verse. 1 Corinthians let me pull this one up. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16. Where'd you go? 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Check this sucker out. 1 Corinthians 3, 16 says, Do you not know that you are God's temple and that God's spirit dwells in you? Don't you know that you're his temple? Don't tell me you're not significant. Don't let the devil tell you that you are not significant, that you're just this lowly down and out or not very special you just da, da, da. no that's not true because if that was true you, first off you wouldn't be the temple of god he's not going to live in junk if you think you're junk god's not going to live in a junk some people say well i'm the presence of god but i'm really just more like a you know i'm just kind of like a little small little old 1960s mobile home little winnebago i just kind of live in the trailer park no that's not where god lives i bless you if you live in a trailer park that's fantastic but guess what you are hosting the very presence of God. You're a mansion. You are this most luxurious chateau right there on the over the 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 the, uh, the, the Alps, looking out in the most glorious splendor. Because God lives in you. You are significant. First, we just read a while ago, Ephesians chapter two six. He raised you up with Jesus. You are seated with Him. Now, let me add one more flavor to that. You're significant. Okay, by yourself, you're significant. But now I want you to make a second declaration. My family's significant. My marriage is significant. My marriage, he has called me the bride of Christ. He cares about my marriage. He cares about my family. We are significant. And begin to make that declaration. All right, number nine, two more. Is this guy's, no, you're not, no. 
Ford Pinto, Mark Moorfield. Am I a Ford Pinto? You know what a Ford Pinto is, Abby, Sydney? It's like an old car, old, not. How would you describe a Ford Pinto to a 13 year old? I have no idea. <laughs> You're this, how about this brand new uh, Roadster Tesla? It's not even out yet. This brand new Tesla, that's who you are, you know? So, all right, number nine. You ready for this one? Number nine. Every person is made in the image of God, so I naturally see other people's value. Woo, this is a good one, guys. I need you to build this one up. This is a massive one for all of you standers. I need you to absolutely make this declaration. Every person is made in the image of God. So, because of that reality, I naturally see others, people value. Begin to declare that over your life, over your spouse. My spouse, excuse me. My spouse is made in the image of God. So therefore, I see their value. I declare how valuable they are. I don't care what's happening, what their lifestyle choices are, whatever they're doing, they are made in God's image. Genesis chapter one, verse 27 tells us that incredible truth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. You and I were made in the image of God. We were made in God's image. We carry intrinsic value. Your spouse has a, a mass amount of value. They could be doing everything wrong in the whole wide world, but guess what? They're still made in the image of God. And because of that, I want you to declare, so I naturally see other people's value. Make it just declare, this is just my natural state. This is just who I am. I naturally see the value of my spouse. I'm just building this, I'm just building this wall. I'm building this, I'm putting the, the, uh, the stake in the ground and I'm pouring concrete in it. That my spouse was made in the image and I can't help but see his value. I can't help it. Because when I see him, I see God. I, I just can't even help it. There's nothing else I can do. When I see him, I see an element of God that I've never seen before because he's made in the image of God. You understand that? That when you look at your spouse, you're believing that God's gonna show you a glimpse of his personality and the glimpse of his goodness that you can't see any other way. That you can only find that in your spouse. And we begin to have that mindset, that reality, and that shifts our heart. Whenever they start acting less like God and they start acting more like the devil, when we begin to see that, we begin to understand this is who he is. All right, number 10, last one here, guys. And this is wonderful, this is powerful, and this is so true. I want you to type this and say this. It is easy for me to love, honor, and value everyone. It is easy for me to love, honor, and value everyone. This is something that I walk in and that I can easily do. I want you to make that declaration. Romans 12, through 12, Romans 12, 10 gives us some encouragement here. He says, love one another with brotherly affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. I love that. Outdo one another in showing honor. Love one another with brotherly affection. Let me see what the Passion Translation says on this one. This gotta be a good one. If that was an ESV, Check this one out. Let's read the Passion. Be devoted to tenderly loving your fellow believers as members of one family. Try to outdo yourselves in respect and honor of one another. This is who you are, guys. This, this is something that we just need to say. If I want the presence of God in my life, if I want the presence of Jesus in my stand, if I'm going to stand supernaturally, which is what this whole group's about, we are saying we can't stand on our own. Or if we do sin our own, it's not going to be what we want. We want a supernatural stand. We want the empowering agent of God and the empowering agent of Christ to supernaturally begin to move and work in my life. And what that happens when the presence of God begins to show up in your life like never before. And so our last little point here was just this reality that it's easy. When God's present, we're going to build up this truth and we're going to begin to build it and we're going to begin to grow it and we're going to begin to live it. It's easy for me to love, honor, and value everyone and just begin to say, that's just who I am. That's just the reality of what happens and how I live. First Peter 1 Peter 1.22, let me give you one verse on that. This is a good one. First Peter 1 Peter 1.22 says, Having purified your souls by your obedience to the truth for a sincere brotherly love, we love one another earnestly from a pure heart. When we build this up, I'll read it again. Having purified your souls by your obedience to the truth for a sincere brotherly love, love one another earnestly from a pure heart. When we can build that up, guys, we begin to put that 
pole on the ground we pour concrete in and now we begin to build these truths here's what's going to happen you are going to see the presence of god in your life like never before these 10 things these are 10 poles post that create a landing spot for the presence of god in your life this is this is just what will happen if we stand supernaturally with these 10 things, let me give you a recap here real quick. Here's the 10 things. Let's just, let me just let you guys know. Because I'm believing every one of you guys are walking in this. Number one, God is good all the time. Two, I co-labor with a good God and represent him through miracles, signs, and wonders. Three, God has called me to make a difference and shape the course of history. Four, just like Jesus did, I represent my Father in everything I do. Number five, nothing is impossible with God. As a believer, it is in my DNA to pursue impossibility and see them bow to Jesus. Number six, every single thing I need was purchased for me at Calvary. Number seven, Jesus provided the answer to any problem before I ever had the problem. So it is easy for me to trust him in all situations. Number eight, I am significant. Number nine, every person is made in the image of God. So I naturally see other people's values. And number 10, it is easy for me to love, honor, and value everyone. Because if we take those 10 things and we begin to let those things build our life and we begin to build your stand around those, let these be the wall. If it isn't land up with those, don't let them in because inside is the presence of God. And through that, that is what you're going to see. And so, guys, I bless you and uh, hope this was encouraging little little word tonight. And I just want to pray over a couple people here. And uh, thanks for letting me spend this time with you guys. As we're here outside and we'll be at Six Flags to nine. We're going to go to Six Flags again tomorrow and just have a good time here. Kids are out of school. And so we decided to come up to Arlington, Texas and, and just have a good old time. And so it's a cool weather. It, it was 100 degrees when we pulled up. Like, what the heck is it 100 degrees for? 100 degrees, my car said, here in October. That ain't right. So, but it feels great now. Beautiful breeze. And guys, I'm just declaring the breeze of the Holy Spirit to be on you. That these things begin to blow in your life. So, as you're looking at that list, if you wrote the list, hope you wrote the list down. I want someone to post real quick. Which one you, I know all of them, I know, I get it. But I want you to say one of them that you are declaring manifest super fast. The, the, the thought kind of mind, the super spreader, you know, that's in the news right now that everything's a super spreader, you know? I want you to declare one of these 10 to be a super spreader. And I'm gonna see the first person I see, and I'm gonna begin to pray that over you. I'm gonna pray over you guys. When I see these things, which ones, let's see here. I wanna see which one of these 10, if you wrote them down, you're gonna be a super spreader. And I'm gonna begin to pray. I am significant. Alice, we declare you have the significance of God on your life like never before. You begin to see how uniquely and how radically and how beautifully you've been made. That your significance is seen by your spouse. We declare right now that your significance is seen by your husband. That it is seen and is un... We, they can't shake it. That's significant. Oh, here we go. Now they're coming in. So we declare that over you, Alice. In Jesus' name, you are significant. And said number six, every single thing I need was purchased for you at Calvary. Absolutely, Anne. So we pray right now, Lord, that you would show Anne, that you would give her the revelation of Calvary. God, that Anne would not just type about it, but she would absolutely be transformed of the understanding that she walks in of all that was purchased for her at the cross. That there's nothing that Anne needs. I declare right now, uh, I hear the Lord saying, Anne, that the, the cross is simple. He has this verse. It says, when you lift up the name of Jesus, he will draw all men unto himself. When we lift up the name of Jesus, he draws all men to himself. That's right out of the scripture. When we lift up the name of Jesus, he draws all men to himself. And I declare over you, Anne, that as you lift up the name of Jesus in your life, God is going to begin to draw your husband into him. That's a promise. That's a prophetic word for you. When you lift up Jesus, he will draw all men to himself. Look up that verse. Memorize that verse. That's a word verse for you. All right. Here we go. Layla. We declare you are significant. You have the significance of God on you, Layla. You are the one who walks in the most radical significance. People look at you, Layla, and they're like, holy crud, who is this person? She has got it going on. She has the significance of someone. Man, this girl must be a celebrity. And I declare you are a celebrity in the kingdom of God, Layla. You and your family walk in that. And the, the power of all that Christ has done is coming out and coming in you. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's see who we got. 
All right, Julie asked something. Nothing is impossible to God. God, we declare that that revelation would hit Julie like never before. That the that she would be a Luke one thirty seven girl. That right now, that Luke one thirty seven will be her life verse over this season. Right now, that Luke one thirty seven says, "For nothing is impossible with God." And I pray that she is one who lives that verse, loves that verse, uh, and just declares that verse, and that everyone will see Julie, and they will see the impossibility of that. That nothing is impossible with God. And I'm going to declare the last part of you, Julie. The last part of that phrase there that I wrote down, nothing is impossible with God. As a believer, it is in my DNA. Uh, Julia, it is in your DNA to pursue impossibilities and see them bow to Jesus. So that's who you are, Julie. You are one who releases the impossibilities and you make them bow to the name of Jesus. Amen. So we declare Susan right now. Susan, we say you are significant, that the significance of God is on you, that you are one who carries the significance that, that I see over you. I just, I just hear the Lord say over you, Susan, that you are adorned, uh, adorned. I don't ever say that word. I, don't, I know that's not in my normal vocabulary, but you are covered in gold, like a golden, glorious uh, head garment. To see your head is covered in the gold. And what I feel like the Lord's telling me over you, Susan, and that God is, He has given you a new level of the mindset of Christ. That you're going to have the mind of Christ. He's already said you have it, but I feel like it's about to increase. That God is putting like a hat, like this golden glory over your head. And with that is going to become revelation. And you're going to have the mindset of Christ. Said, the thoughts of Jesus are about to be the thoughts of Susan. I'm going to say that again. The thoughts of Jesus are becoming the thoughts of Susan. So, Lord, I impart that into Susan right now. I declare she thinks like you. She has your mind. She has your thoughts. She has your expectations. Thank you in Jesus' name. So that's over you, Susan. That's who you are, girl. All right, Bessie, God is good. Absolutely, Lord. I thank you that, that Bessie walks in the revelation of the goodness of God, that Bessie sees how good you are, Lord, that there, that that she is, the first comes to mind and says, surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of your life. I want to tell you what that verse means, Bessie. That verse, if you look in the original Hebrew, this is surely goodness and mercy will follow. That word follow actually is the Hebrew word for pursue or to hunt or to chase or to stalk. That's what that word means, to follow. Most of we think follow, oh nice, goodness and mercy is following me like a little puppy dog. No, 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 no. Goodness and mercy is hunting you down. His goodness is hunting you down, Bessie. This might be a, this is a negative word, so give me some grace here. He is stalking you, girl. God's goodness is stalking you and he's not letting you go. His goodness is on fire. He's pursuing you. He's stalking you. He's hunting you down, Bessie. That is what goodness of God is doing. So I'm telling you right now, Bessie, guess what? Just get caught. Just let him catch you because he's hunting you down. He's following you. And no matter where you go, he's pursuing you. So that word is for you, Miss Bessie. God is good. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right, Lori. God has called me to make a difference. Uh, I am his lift. Did I say that about that? Sorry. <laughs> yeah. I don't know, but I like your first part. So, Lori, God has called you to make a difference. He's making a difference to shape the course of your family history. That's who you are, Lori, because of you. That the, that the history is being shaped. And, and Lord, and Lori, what I just saw with you, Lori, I just see a lot of, and, and this isn't just a big, just give me, just know, I really feel like this is the Lord. So um, don't reject this. I feel like the Lord's about to pour out some great, massive income on you. And so I know a lot of people say, oh, it's all about money. He's always prophesying. No, I don't, you know me. I, I mean, I believe God gives prosperity, but I see over you. I want you to receive this as a word of the Lord. Lori, I see God giving you extreme, extreme wealth. I see him really blessing you financially. And there's going to be a financial blessing on your family. So I want you to go to war with that. I want you to fight that. I see your family financial situation. I don't know your family financial situation. You might already be really well off. But I feel like the Lord's about to do something really extremely well on you. And there's about to be a shift in your generational line. Because why? That what you just said, God has called me to make a difference. To shape the course of history. To shape your history. You were standing. You were doing something. There's going to be something released through you, Lori. There's going to bring a financial outpouring that is going to be so impactful, it's going to shift your family's history. And so I bless you with that. I prophesy that. I declare that. And I impart that ability, whether it's a new career, whether it's a business, or whether it's just the favor, whether it's your spouse, however it's coming into, we say, Lord, let it be. However you want to bring it in, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for that. Do it to Lori right now and let it shape her family's history in Jesus' name. We declare you make a difference, Lori. You make a difference, girl. Awesome. Amen. Amen. Sally, will I be watching again tomorrow? Yeah, this will be live. 
I mean, this will be in the group. And so what, when we do our Sunday nights, they're here. Um, and we'll also put this in the unit section. We try to kind of, kind of create a, a kind of like a catalog of the teachings that we do. Um, and so whether we did it on Sunday nights, you know, whether we do it another time, just so you can always go back in and you'll have this teaching about, uh, the pillars or not the pillars, excuse me, uh, just these 10, uh, just kind of tent poles, uh, of the presence of God, a presence driven family. And so we'll put this, once it's done, we'll put this in the, in the unit section, um, in there. So you can go back and watch this anytime. So absolutely. So, all right, Jackie, my family is significant. Yes, it is. We declare right now that the significant aspect of Jackie's family, that she begins to walk in the most significant revelation that she has in her family. God, I declare she's significant. Jackie's absolutely significant, and she is shifting things, and she is moving things. Amen. We just declare that and say that. Amen, amen, and amen. All right, I want to scroll through here. Someone has just popped on here. Let me just see. Scroll down. So instead of just going, so I was going down, but let me just scroll. If you, I don't know who was in, I've, I've lost my spot of who was the next person up. I apologize for that. And so I'm just going to see where am I at here. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I see Lori, all caps, bought me there and got my attention. DNA to pursue and see it below, see it bow to. Sorry, I misread that. Lori, I declare you do have the DNA to pursue the impossibilities and see it bow. That's who you are. That is who you are. In Jesus' name. Amanda, just like Jesus did, you represent the Father in everything you do. Absolutely. But we pray over Amanda that you give her that, that grace to be able to represent you in everything that she does, that everything that her hand touches, that everything that her hand that everything she sets her mind to, that there's the presence of the Lord because she is obeying you. She hears your voice. Amanda hears your voice. And she does what you call her to do. God, I thank you for that. I thank you for Amanda. I thank you, Lord. Amen. Kimberly Delay, I naturally see the value in my spouse, Chad. Absolutely you do. That's who you are, Kimberly. You are one who naturally sees the value that God has put in Chad. You begin to see the absolute, the intrinsic value from God on Chad, that your eyes can't help but notice it. And so Kimberly, that's just who you are, that you're someone who sees Chad and you begin to see the goodness that God has placed in him. You begin to see how Chad is made in the image of God. And it's a glorious thing and it's a beautiful thing. And so we thank you, Lord, I thank you for Kimberly. I thank you that she has your eyes. I thank you that she sees what you did in Chad's life. In Jesus name, thank you for that, Lord. Amen. Sally, I got to pray for you, girl, because she says my spouse, Jason, is significant. Come on with it. What do you think about that, Sydney? Don't you think Jason is significant? You like that one? Yeah, she gave a thumbs up. My spouse, Jason, is significant. So, Sally, I bless you and I bless Jason. And I declare absolutely Jason's walking in the significance that he's called to. Like, I just got to pray that you would give Jason such a revelation of who he is. That tonight, Jason would begin to see the glory, God, that you're offering to him the glory that's placed on his life. And I declare right now that Sally begins to see the significance of the calling of Jason's life. And Jason begins to embrace that significance. And he runs to it. And he, he doesn't shrink back. He is excited about it. So right now, Lord, we bless Jason. I bless Jason. I bless Jason. Everyone say that. I bless Jason to see the walk and the significance of who he is. Amen. Amen. There we go. Let's see him. Got my Six Flags cup here. Unlimited refills for the next year and a half. It's pirate. We won't mention the cookies that we've got down here. So we won't talk about that. All right. Let's see here. And let's see. Here we go. Boom, boom, boom. Oh, yeah, I like this one, Christy. Jesus provided the answer to my problem before I ever had a problem. Come on with it. And that's some good truth right there. So we declare right now, Lord, that Christy begins to see the revelation that she already has the, she already has the answer. That any problem that occurs, and I, and I feel like the Lord uh, is going to show you that, Christy, that, that, that any problem that arises up, that he's going to give you that confidence to say, I already have the answer to this thing. He already saw the problem. That he already he saw it. He already has done it. That, there's, that every... Um, 
you know, before the problem existed, he already gave me the answer. Ephesians 1, 3. Okay? That's what it says. Romans 8, 28. He worked all things according to his good. And so, Lord, before the foundation of the world, he knew you. And so, God, I pray right now that Christy walks in that revelation. That before the problem even shows up, that you already give her the answer. That you already show her that you're the answer. And so, therefore, she's easy for her to trust you in all situations. So I pray that and I prophesy over Christy that she is one who trusts you, Lord, in every situation. There's not a situation she ever faced where trust isn't natural. The trust isn't easy. I declare over Christy that trust is easy for her because she knows you already have the answer. I declare that as a tenet that she lives by. In Jesus' name, I impart that to her right now. I say she has it. She has that revelation in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Let's see what we got here. One. Yeah, I like what I'm seeing. Look at that. Rose, this is pretty interesting. It says, every time I, I turn in Jason, I'm tune in Jason, probably what she means. Every time I tune in Jason, my husband calls me at that time. The Holy Spirit's talking to him. Come on, Rose. Absolutely. That's what we're believing for. That's what we believe that the presence of reconciliation is on us. That I just, you know, I believe that's just what, that's, the, that's his promise. He's given us the ministry of reconciliation. That we can reconcile the world back to himself. That, that is a calling that God has put on every one of us. And that's a calling that I just accept. I'm like, hey. God, this is just who I am. I teach tennis for Baylor. I'm a tennis coach. I'm a tennis teacher. Someone says, hey, what do you do? I'm a tennis teacher. Someone says, what else do you do? I bring reconciliation to people. That's just who I am. That's just the calling of God all my life. You're a preacher? Yeah, I'm a preacher. But what do you do? I reconcile people back to God. When God, his presence is on us, and I declare he's on you. He's on this group. He's on this page. He's on your life. He's on the church. He is reconciling people. So we declare right now that... Rose's husband is reconciled right now back to her in Jesus' name. Not because of something that we're doing. It's because of what God is doing through us. God is doing through us. What do we got here? Oh, here's Pam. What you got one, Pam? It's easy for me to love, honor, and value everyone. Absolutely. You sure do, Pam. That's who you walk in. We declare that over you. It is easy for you, Pam, to love, to honor, and value everyone. God, I thank you that Pam walks in. I thank you that Pam is known throughout the whole world. That Pam, and I'm not over-exaggerating Pam, I'm not just saying just words that make it sound nice and big. That Pam is known throughout the whole world to love, to honor, and value everyone she comes in contact with. I declare that revelation over you, Pam. That anointing is on you, Pam, to love, to honor, and value everyone. And that truth is, a, is known around the whole world. And I declare that over you. And I say you are, you are set apart for that. And you're destined for that in Jesus' name. Amen. Did you hear that horn? It honked. It agreement. I had the old, I don't know, something honk. I think the Cowboys game. We're close to the Cowboys stadium. It was halftime earlier. I'm sure it's over now. I don't know if uh-oh, what did I just do? Oh, I just flipped the camera. Oh, crud. How do I flip it back? How did that happen? There we go. Got it. I didn't even hit that button. I know there's a button that says flip camera. I did not hit that button. I'm trying to scroll up. And then it flipped. All right. Let's see here. All right. Sylvia says, God provided an answer for to every problem I face. That is why it's so easy for me to believe him. Absolutely, Sylvia. It's easy for you, girl. It's so easy for you. Wayne, God is restoring my family. Yes, he is. God is restoring it. Amen. Amen. We are believing that. That is absolutely true. Let's see here. Let me just scroll here down to the bottom see what we got. Nakona, nothing is impossible for God. We declare that over you. I just pray this, the, the, um, the impossibility pursuit is what Nakona walks in. She walks in the, she walks and she pursues those impossibilities. And she says they bow to the name of Jesus. She doesn't run from it. I see this, Nakona. I see 
I see you shifting into a phase, and I'm not saying you were in this phase, so please give me the grace to, to not try to say something that I don't know what I'm talking about. But I'm seeing you shifting into a phase that impossibilities no longer hinder you. I see, um, I see someone standing up and no longer being um, down or, you know, struggling emotionally or depressed or really just kind of a gut punch. I see, I see you standing up, and I'm seeing the impossibility of life never making you do again. I feel like there have been things in the past that maybe have made you bow and like not not in reverence, but in like oh, like a gut punch, and you just kind of got hit and you went low. I see over you now, a transformation is happening right now in this call over you, Nakona, for the rest of your life, that you will never bow like that before. You will never, you will hunch over because something punched you and took you down. But from now on, those impossibilities will bow before you. And they will bow before the Christ in you because you release the power of God to break every one of those. And so I declare you are strong, you are, you are, you are steadfast, you are secure, and there's nothing coming at you that will give you a gut punch and that will take you down. But you will make those impossibilities bow at the name of Jesus. So that is who you are. That is what we see over you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, guys, bless you. Thanks for hopping on tonight. It's, it's uh, 8.32 here. And so we're going to just wrap up our time together. And, man, I just want to tell you, we're praying for you. Uh, like I said, we're here with the old family doing the old Six Flags trip. But wanted to come out. I wanted to break away from everyone because I want you to know how significant you guys are in our lives and how much we believe in your marriage and how much we believe in you and how much we believe in what God is doing in your life. God is restoring every one of your marriages. Hear me say that. God is restoring every one of your marriages. Why? Because he has given us the ministry of reconciliation. He is coming back for a beautiful bride, for a beautiful church. And I declare right now that your family will be restored. Divorce is not, not the plan of God. You can say with all confidence, no. Do not let the enemy tell you that this is impossible. Because why? Impossibilities bow at the name of Jesus that you are releasing. And you see them bow. And so, guys, I bless you. I pray for you. Just know that we're with you. Um, just keep on, keep on standing supernaturally. God is moving. God is moving. God is moving. Um, I have this list here. Maybe I'll put this PDF. I, I can't do it. Oh, I can't do it now, can I? Maybe I can in the unit section, what I'm going to do is in the unit section, we're going to take this video and we're going to put it in the units as a video teaching you can replay. I'm also going to put a PDF of those 10 points uh, that I mentioned and also the verses that went along with it. So uh, you guys were taking notes and talking about, but this is what I believe brings the presence of God in our life. And so I'm going to put it, I'll, I'll make a PDF and I'll put this in the, in the unit section. So you can always go back and look at these again and you can have the scripture references. So you can always go to, we want to equip you. We want to, we want to empower you. What I believe this group is about is empowering you to stand supernaturally. I believe we, we, we walk in the supernatural power. We release the prophetic word. Why? To empower you. We give, we give teaching. We give training. Why? We want to empower you. There's a lot of amazing groups out there who want to encourage, and I love it. Do it. Be encouraged. Hopefully this group is encouragement. We hope you get that here. But I feel like God has called me to, to equip, to equip and to train and transform and to show us you can stand supernaturally. Here's how you do it. You can make it easy. Standing supernaturally can be easy when we begin to build up what I call the I call the four pillars of standing supernaturally. Having a divine perspective, learning how to stand against opposition and in the storms. That's pillar two. Three is standing um, with a healed heart is the third pillar. And four is standing with divine resources and the supernatural tools. Those are my four pillars that I believe that when you live these out, standing for your marriage in the midst of great chaos, in the great, midst of great turmoil, becomes easy. Why? Jesus made it very clear. His yoke is easy and his burden is light. It's time that we call Jesus on his words. It's time that we say, Jesus, you said your yoke is easy. You said your burden is light. So whatever I'm experiencing, you must remove the, the heaviness. And you must remove the hardness, and it now must become easy. I demand your truth to come into my stand right now. And this is what he does. And this is what we feel uniquely called to do. And so we bless you. We love you. We're praying for you guys. You guys are awesome. And um, I will see you guys later. So have a great day. Have a great night. Bless you guys. Bye-bye. You want to say anything, Sydney? Nope. She didn't want to say anything. She didn't want to say anything to y'all. But I do. Bye-bye. See you guys. <laughs>